you will, I did not know this about Nancy and I was like, wow, she was a bad ass bitch. <laughs> so Nancy was born in 1964 and in the 1980s she was working as a model, had interest in wrestling uh, and she met Kevin Sullivan, a famous wrestler. He asked her to be a part of his entourage. Now we all know pro wrestling. There's like this, um, there's this image, there's this story that comes with that. And um she was incredibly valued in his entourage as a ringside performer, and she was called Fallen Angel. And then later she would be named Woman. Now, Nancy was such a valued member, as I said, she not only was a ringside performer and um, was like Kevin Sullivan's right hand, if you will, she did makeup, she did hair for everybody, she did, she did everything, all that behind the scenes work, that was Nancy, and Kevin worshipped her for it. She was worshipped by a lot of people for it. Then, as their careers grew, Kevin decided that he was going to book a Canadian wrestler named Chris Benoit. Now, forgive me that I don't quite know where Chris Benoit's career was at this time, but I'm assuming he was very, very well known and he was also rising and growing his career and gaining popularity so they met and instantly formed a bond and Chris you know joined this entourage if you will and they created this performance where it cracks me up where Chris Benoit took woman away from Kevin and it was their, you know, soap opera, if you will. And uh, Chris and Nancy were constantly, um, you know, seen like canoodling and making fun of Kevin. And like, it was this very, it heightened the drama and the power behind Kevin and Chris's fights and, you know, that's just what a lot of pro wrestling is about. It's about that performance and that drama and, um, who knew this drama, this, you know, performance would actually become quite the reality. Kevin and Nancy both had an incredibly strained relationship at this point and Chris was going through his own issues with his wife and he had an older son named David and I say older son um, but he had a son and um, it is his eldest son David <laughs> Now, Nancy confided a lot in Chris. They became really close, and I believe she told Chris something to the effect of that Kevin is physical and violent, and it turns out that Chris and Kevin resulted in a real, true battle drama scene for a woman, for Nancy, in real life. Chris ruptured his eardrum and really messed him up, supposedly. And the two became committed and an item after that, Chris and Nancy. And then very quickly, they welcomed a baby boy named Daniel. Now, according to Chris Benoit's oldest son, David, Nancy was an absolutely incredible mother. He didn't just see her as like a stepmom, he saw her as mom. And he did have his own biological mother, of course, but he really loved Nancy. She was 
was so good to Daniel, she was so good to him. And uh, being a mom meant everything to Nancy. This is kind of everything. Her career was almost working up to building so that she could go into this next transition and next phase of her life and be a mother and have children. Now, the WCW began to change, began to grow, and Chris went to be a part of the WWE. And <laughs> Chris was so popular, so popular. He was becoming increasingly well-known and famous. His career was booming, and he was considered one of the, and he still is considered, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He was dubbed Wild Pegasus, or the Pegasus Kid. He had various names, and he really, truly really shaped a wrestling that we know of today. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the second video. Chris was very close with another wrestler, Eddie Guerrero, and Eddie was part of a long lineage of pro wrestling, and he wrestled with Benoit for years. They were inseparable. They were true best friends, not just co-workers. True best friends. Their families were close. They were a family. And when they used to have fights together, Chris Jericho, sorry, that was disgusting. <laughs> Chris Jericho said that they used to fight like they owed each other money. So they really played it off and they went hard. Eddie was Chris's confidant. He was, again, his best friend, and Eddie himself for a few years was struggling with some addiction and self-medicating due to injuries sustained in wrestling, and this impacted Eddie's work so negatively to where he was fired, then rehired, then fired again, and he just, he had a lot of issues going on, and his own wife recalls calling his name one day, and he was overdosing, and I believe she had said she, like, left the house with her kids and was like, you know what, God, if you're gonna take him, take him, like, put him out of his misery. So that's how bad his addiction got. Then there was this turning point. He finally got his job back. He got clean. And he really, really, he was always a religious man, but he really dived deeper into his religion and his higher power. And Chris always asked him about this. And, um, again, was so in love with Eddie and I say in love because he just, he loved him. He respected him. Again, they were, they were BFFs. And now, on November 13th, 2005, Eddie passed away very unexpectedly in a hotel room in Minneapolis where they, I believe, were filming something for the WWE or one of those WWs, if you will. And his nephew, who is also a well-known, respected uh, wrestler, part of that lineage, he was with him, found him, and um, his uncle, Eddie, died in his arms at the age of 38 years old. And this shocked everybody. Everybody was so distraught, but nobody was as distraught as Chris Benoit. When Chris received the call about what happened to Eddie, his
his nephew recalls hearing this whale. He calls it a whale. And this is where we see Chris Benoit completely change. Eddie's cause of death was heart failure due to, you know, underlying cardiovascular disease. I read that he had like an enlarged heart. Um, it was a traumatic loss for the wrestling community and his family, but again, Chris took it the hardest. Chris completely broke down when um, he was asked to speak in a video on TV about Eddie uh, just could not keep his composure and this was this was Chris's every day pretty much until the events in 2007 he became incredibly distant and he cried constantly Nancy at one point had moved out for a month to go help Eddie's family. I believe Eddie had some daughters and, you know, his wife that he left behind. And she went there to pull Eddie's wife out of bed and to help her begin to pick up the pieces. And it's such a beautiful thing. And I feel, I feel so bad for Nancy because, like, she, she couldn't reach Chris, but she knew that she could help this family, and maybe in helping this family, it would help Chris, too, if he saw other people getting themselves back together, because in the midst of death, we are in life. Chris was lost, and Eddie's wife remembers hearing him in her bedroom, sleeping on Eddie's side of the bed and sobbing uncontrollably. And again, this continued, this deep struggle with this loss, and it increased. And now, Chris became paranoid. He became concerned that because he was a well-known, um, you know, famous, if you will, individual, he became increasingly afraid of somebody harming him, um, seeing people, you know, following him in his car. He was just very paranoid. And, um, his grief deepened, his depression deepened. So they all decided, and I mean they all, like his family, his friends, decided they would give him a journal to where he could write to Eddie, and he could just convey his feelings, and I thought that was a really, like, beautiful way that his family, you know, came to, and his friends came to his aid and came to help him in such a really hard time. I know that, like, if I lost a best friend of mine or a really close family member, you know, it's just that's hard, that's hard stuff, and no matter if you're, like, a 30-something-year-old wrestler, like, how do you navigate that stuff, you know, sometimes there's just no answer. So, they began to intervene, and they began to try and reach him and pull him out of this. With that, Chris and Nancy's marriage began to show signs of struggle and deterioration, there were issues of domestic violence and anger brewing in Chris and Nancy and just a lot of resentment and sadness and a lot of marital issues. And Nancy's sister predominantly speaks to this in interviews and recalls Nancy confiding in her about Chris's increased anger, increased sadness, his depression, and Nancy's sister still to this day holds a lot of regret and she's 
very upset with herself that she couldn't have maybe done something else or said something else to help Chris and Nancy either navigate this or separate or, you know, something so that the events of 2007 maybe would not have transpired. But again, I mean, ultimately her sister knows there's nothing that she could have done and what happened, happened. And I'm going to end part one with videos, 30 videos that will not, not, not be on YouTube.